man composer. <laughs> but that's just between me and you. <laughs> All right. I well, luckily we caught just the end of that. That's okay. already it's already like always well, we hard composer. Okay, cool. Um yeah, um I work at AMC, so I get posters. We have uh -huh. extras. Not, not the return living dead one. Oh my god. That one, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, the Candyman, and uh, there's another cooler one with um, just a hook, and it's got like, yeah, uh, I've seen that. It. Oh, love it. I haven't seen the movie yet, though. I um, haven't either. I'm too busy working while I'm there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm not working, I don't want to be there. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So everybody who's watching this, um, whether it be after the fact or live, um, if you're watching live, please feel free to ask Keith. I'm sorry, Chad, some questions. Um, this is Chad. He he's uh, an amazing artist. If you could see some of the Thank stuff, oh, I I just noticed that. Way? There you go. Woo! Shits and giggles. I love that. Um, love your other work too. Um, follow you. follow Chad on on Instagram, um, especially because that's where you post most of your stuff, right? Yeah, that's it. Uh, what's, what's your what's your handle or whatever you call it? Chad Keith Helsinki. Chad Keith Helsinki. And what's the meaning behind that? I lived at Hel in Helsinki at the time I joined Instagram. So there was a bunch of other artists named Chad Keith. So I didn't want to be Chad Keith in a number. So I figured, yeah. oh, I, I, I live in Helsinki. So that's I thought I would be living there for maybe forever. I wasn't sure. How was but, it? Oh, I loved it. I yeah. absolutely loved it. So we went just to go to school up there. Well, my wife went to school. I went to like trade school and stuff, but. We ended up staying for 17 years. So, what? Was, yeah, it was awesome. I, wow. I, I love the people, everything about it. The rest of the country, yeah, it's okay, but <laughs> Helsinki uh, was great. I don't think I've ever met anybody or spoke to anybody from like from Finland. I, I know I've met a lot of Swedes and I have good friends who are uh, Norwegian, but uh, yeah. And they, they seem to love that. I mean, their countries too, but uh, apparently up there in Scandinavia or whatever, it's, it's really, really cool. 17 years. Wow. Yeah. You go to school the whole time or you <laughs> No, no, I worked and ended up having kids there, everything. It was that's just, awesome. Yeah, it was great. I absolutely loved it. Now did it the scenery influence first. what's that? Did, did the scenery influence you at all or did you do any cool stuff with uh some of the stuff there or no not at or, all? No? <laughs> no. No. It was just uh so it's almost eight months of winter and it's it gets up to minus forty degrees, so you're just inside all the time. So, uh, which yeah. is good for me. Now I'm back in California, so I have to be out all the time. And yeah, you know, oh, man, I, out yeah. heat and everything. So, yeah, growing up in New England, I've learned to despise uh, cold weather and uh, not being able to breathe when you go outside because it's so fucking cold and um, <laughs> shovel, shoveling snow and yeah, oh, yeah, 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 bundling up. No, I, no, I, yeah, the really bundling afraid. up was the worst because it's, uh, we had to put long johns on, you know, the under, yeah. then the outer clothes and the mask and <laughs> everything. It was so cold. So cold, I almost cried before, you know, when I first felt it, I was like, oh, this is unbelievable. <laughs> no, yeah, it God. was 40 degrees out of control. Woo. So um, were nuts. So when did you start uh, doing making art? Uh, like... 2001, I would say. I had a work injury, so I was laying in bed most of the time. I had uh, tore my ligaments in the cartilage and everything, so I got a bunch of uh, somehow juxtaposed magazines when they first started coming out. Cool. And I just said, ah, I used to draw all the time. I want paintings in my house, and I don't want to pay for them, so I just <laughs> know how to paint, and that was that's where it just came from. That's awesome. Uh, has it always been the same, like neon style, or no? Oh, I used know? to do more classical style. Yeah. Like uh, I used to get the books just from like half price books and stuff, and cool. the classical artists and copy everything, and taught myself, and you know, just anything I could find on teaching, and just taught myself that the neon stuff's more new. I've just uh. Uh, just experimenting, trying to do stuff like Richard Corbin kind of and mix everything, oil paint, airbrush, acrylic paint, ink, everything. So, yeah, just, and it just looks cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so the, the best part about following you and again, I was following you for a little bit, obviously, before I reached out to you. But, um, you know, I, I love different types of 
you know, d darker art, but also, you know, um, a lot of that um, collage art too, I do like. I, I, I was following a, different, a bunch of collage artists, a bunch of surreal artists, a bunch of just random artists that I was looking for, you know, the right people or right, right somebody that would actually be able to pull off doing, you know, a movie poster type of deal. Because again, um, actually, I don't know if many people know this, but people close to me know that my idol is Charles Band, Charlie Band. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the reason why, I, I mean, ever since I was a child, I wanted to be him um, from Empire Pictures, especially because those were like bigger budgets than full moon films. But Empire Pictures and even some before that, um, Empire specifically were like big ideas, little budgets, but you could just tell, even just going into those films, you knew and you kind of gave it like the benefit of the doubt because you knew it wasn't going to be a $40 million film, but it was a $40 million idea. Um, and a lot of those films came out great, like The Reanimator, Dolls, uh, Transfers, um, you know, Prison, Ghost Town. I mean, it's so many of those, um, so many of those films are my favorites. The Doll, I'm sorry, Troll, Ghoulies. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ghoulies 2, et cetera. Um, those yeah, are, yeah. I ended up realizing, like, those are all my favorite films. Then I figured out, okay, that's Charles Band that did that. And at the time when I figured this out, um, I'm like, oh, he's got, you know, Full Moon Entertainment at the time. And now it's like full moon features, whatever it is now. But um, and I love those as well, like Shadow Zone, Seed People, uh, uh, the Puppet Master series, obviously subspecies, and and so on and so on. Um, uh, again, and so what he did back in the day when when he was running Empire Pictures was he would get a beautiful piece of art. As oh yeah, poster. I know all about it. Oh I yeah, yeah. So that's that. That was my idea. I mean, not my idea. That's my idea that I stole from him. Was that with subsoil, I wanted to do something similar, where I took an amazing piece of art and then tried to use that to help fund the film, like or sell the, the idea <laughs> of the film. I mean, that's what he did, and he was able to successfully, you know, film a lot of them. There was also a lot of beautiful pieces of art for films that never even got made. It's so yeah, sad, yeah. But it was beautiful though. Um, beautiful artwork. So anyway. Um, that's how I kind of discovered you was you, the, your art style. Um, I wanted to have you. Yeah. I wanted you to do some of our uh, films and the first film that came to my mind of what we had at the time, um, either something that even hadn't been written yet or something that had been written was, you know, obviously night of the meteor scourge, which was originally called Jaker's Island. But uh, Joseph uh, Brightman absolutely took that script and, and, and idea and concept and made one of the most sickening, beautiful e dark evil films where it just starts off messed up and it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse all the way to the end the trajectory yeah is just it was like a this. Great script. that's right you read it I forgot. oh yeah <laughs> awesome yeah I, I love it um it, it's absolutely one of my favorites and it just so happens that my other one of my other favorites that we have uh finished script wise is shits and giggles and that's more of an action-packed horror i mean you wouldn't know it by the title you wouldn't know it by you know even the the poster um but we definitely wanted those two clowns which before this is over i'm gonna have to do a strip tease for everybody and show um i have those clowns on my shoulder because they traumatized me as a child <laughs> where in salisbury beach massachusetts it used to be thriving in the 50s 60s 70s and 80s in the early 90s it was a thriving like beach town um yeah it's like our santa cruz over here exactly like santa cruz you know but um it, unfortunately it, whatever developers came in and as soon as uh, arcade or something amusement was struggling they would come in and build condos and more condos and more condos and i thought of like okay well what about you know those two iconic clown faces that had been, you know moved from time to time as businesses went out of, out of place um, and those two clown faces are still up today. And so yeah, I saw it at pizza parlor or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's it actually, up, I... yeah, it's it's actually above. Um, it's it's owned by Joe's Playland, which actually owns two arcades there in Salisbury Beach. And those clowns haunted me as a child. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Um, I got Brandon to write the script for me. And I'm like, listen, man, I need something where like these clowns just come back, you know, an exact revenge or something, just cause mayhem or whatever. Um, where like there were people who actually wore those, even though they had the signs, but they, they um, there were people, vagabonds or whatever, that got hired every summer to, you know, promote the beach or like, you know, run around the beach with those yeah. clown suits on and, and, and try to entice people to play games or whatever, um, which is true. It actually happened. Um, 
and there's also a witch because it was a uh, like a dark ride called Witch's Castle, and then another one with a big giant ugly looking pirate face called uh, Pirates Park, and those haunted me as well. And I actually for the sequel, we're going to incorporate those characters more so. So at some point, be ready to make the shits and giggles two poster or whatever yeah, it's going to be course. called or whatever um, with the pirate or witch. But um, yeah, um, that was the concept. That was the idea. And again, I it's more action packed, the actual script itself, because again, Brandon is is very he, he loves his action. He loves his, you know. Um, yeah, I seen he was a stunt driver for the Miami Vice movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he's he's phenomenal. He's he's. He's a he's one of my favorite people too that I've ever met, and um, and again, as a, I want him, obviously he wants to as well, uh, direct that film, and and um, he's directed a few independent films. Um, he's also done everything else you can imagine in yeah. the business on films, and uh, I want him to be like my Ernest Dickerson, you know, of of <laughs> you know this uh, the subsoil family, which we'll we'll interview him on here sometime soon too, and and eventually we'll. We'll all come back around and do a little powwow with everybody on this channel as well from time to time just to keep people updated on what we're doing. But um, yeah, so anyway, back to you. Um, the we, we gave you the some images. Brandon gave you some images to yes. go off of and and um, and just walk us through, I guess, like what were your um, – let, let's talk about that one because it's the most recent one. Then we can also talk about now the meter scores. But what were your thoughts and ideas on when you were – in your process of like making the Shits and Giggles poster, which is behind you? Well, my process is kind of dumb. It's uh, I just like to start with a simple line drawing. Just kind of, I don't plan it out at all. So it's just like, oh, we'll put this image, this image, this image, and then I just color it kind of and no planning whatsoever. That's how I, I like to do everything. So it's exactly how you show people on your Instagram, right? Yeah, you'll, exactly. Okay. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm <laughs> going to paint either. Oil, oil. Or maybe I'll do a black and white airbrush over, or I don't know. I don't figure it out until I'm doing it. That's and, cool, though. That's like you, that's your your uh, that's your way of doing it, your procedure. Your uh, yeah, there hasn't uh, been many disasters, so no, uh, dude. Things and, are listen, out. Brandon and I were talking, uh, I think last week about to the shits and giggles thing because he he had finally sent me like the, the you know the final image of it, and I was telling him like, dude, and he was saying the same thing. We were like, dude. Every day I was going on, once he first posted that first black and white image or that first stencil drawing or whatever, um, and then the next day he posted another uh, piece of the work in progress. And then we're like, whoa, we didn't see that coming. And then we we literally check in our phone all day. When's Chad going to make another post? When's Chad going to post another another work in progress? And then something new would come out. and like, holy shit. And then, the, you know, then you'd add the two knives at the bottom or like, you know, just subtly, just random things. And then we would see it unfold and we're like, holy shit, didn't see that coming. And then at the end, it again, like right behind that thing looks so, so awesome, so beautiful. And I hope it helps us uh, make the movie because <laughs> it's an awesome script. Just like Night of the Mirror Scores. Uh, so again, same thing with Night of the Mirror Scores. Like we uh, we gave you less images to go off yeah. of, le less of an idea. So I guess it would be more so what you read in the script, I guess, or how? That no, work? it was yeah. at the time. It was just like something brewing under a town. So I was like, ah, yeah. we'll just put something <laughs> brewing under a town. You know, like I like I, said, I I like not knowing. Yeah. Like you know, like how you were talking about Charlie Band and stuff. Like, yeah. oh, here's a a title. Come up with something, and yes, we'll tell the movie, and that's that's a that's what I love. I I like it not even to be related to the movie, you know, like the craziness. <laughs> so that's what I'm, you know, like speaking of Charlie Band, like I had the Seed People poster in my room as a child. Me too. That, <laughs> that was the first poster I ever got from a movie store, like yeah, the, the, yeah. Uh, the local movie store. I grabbed that and I grabbed Transfers too. And it just so happened, you guys can't see it, but um. I couldn't. I haven't found the Sea People poster yet on eBay, but I found the Transfers Two one, and then that was the first poster I bought for my son of like horror, or science fiction, or whatever posters to put on his wall. I'm in his room, by the way, just so people know that this isn't my bedroom. Um, <laughs> my son's got a cool little setup, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to use your setup because it's easier to just plug and play. But um, yeah, I, I bought him that, and I'm going to get him the Sea People poster too. Yeah, the um, poster's amazing. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's kind of like. Um, it looks like a digital piece of art, but if you look at it closely, yeah. it does look drawn or yeah. painted, you know, and I love that. I know. I was just looking at it a while ago, and I was like, 
man, is this like digital or is it painted? Like I couldn't tell. Like, uh, yeah, exactly. And and the same thing with the 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 Transfers two poster is like just Jack Death standing with Helen Hunt and Megan Ward, um, and then this weird surreal background, um, and. Again, it's it's one of those I can't really tell. The closer you look, it's like, well, that looks painted. It doesn't look like a photograph <laughs> yeah. of those people. It's like crazy. Um, but yeah, things like um, Zone Troopers. Um, that was another one where uh, the actual box art was different than the original poster. The original poster was a painting of like army men running off. Yeah, and yeah. Explosions in the background. But the iconic... I want you. I want you. Yeah. I love the. I I love that. I have actually. I bought two copies of that thing. So I saw there was two original copies for dirt cheap on eBay recently, and I'm like, you know what? I don't have a place to put the other one yet, but I'm gonna one day, and I'm gonna buy that. Um, yeah. So another thing too. Um, since I work at the movie theater, and I'm not really allowed to sell posters and stuff like that, <laughs> I'm actually going to be doing um, some giveaways uh, with along with these videos, not necessarily these ones in particular. Um, we're also going to be putting up a Patreon soon to help out with the channel, but also to help out with, um, you know, making movies. Uh, all the money that comes in goes directly to making movies. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to be giving away some movie posters and stuff like that. So I do have an extra copy of, um, you know, this this Candyman poster. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to get another copy of the Halloween Kills poster um, and just stuff like that. Um, yeah. Whenever there's any horror, you know, stuff that comes in, I might even give away the... Uh, uh, the the other zone troopers poster which is fucking phenomenal um it's just iconic yeah man it's just it's so to the point and and beautiful um but anyway so um yeah you've done you've done two posters we're definitely going to have you do more as time goes on as we you know raise you know money to make these movies we can yes. raise money to make more posters and stuff like that but again i wanted once i well actually once you first responded to me i knew that okay well this is this is a good conversation. I'm actually going to make this guy like, you know, I want him to do as many of the posters as we possibly can. Um, yeah. So we we do have a couple more that we already have in mind that would be perfect with you know your your style, um, which we'll we'll discuss at some point. But what are some of like, you know, is there any music that influences you when you do these things, or is it just you you go with the flow? Is it movies, or or just literally just draw? Or paint yeah, paint? just draw. Uh, like me, I don't even listen to music when I'm painting or doing anything. I listen to podcasts and audio books. Really? Oh yeah. That's it. No music at all. And uh, yeah, just... there's, there's one that you should listen to that we literally just talked about with, with Joe Brightman. Uh, one of his biggest influences, um, writing, it was another writer. I forgot the guy's name. I, I'm not going to butcher it, but basically there's this story called, um, the last feast of Harley Quinn. And th th basically the writer was, is, is more dark and a little more surreal than HP Lovecraft. He was heavily influenced by Lovecraft. So yeah. it's more like body horror versus cosmic horror and the writing style is insane. And there's actually like free audio books of his on YouTube. So if you type out like the last feast of Harley Quinn, there's definitely an audio book of that story, which is actually a piece of, a larger book but um it's it's insane there's clowns in there too and there's like clown meetings <laughs> like clowns will get all together and then they'll just like pick one guy out randomly of amongst themselves and just start beating the shit up which is kind of cool <laughs> random stuff it's just completely random but um yeah so well what's what's some of your favorite uh movies horror movies uh i like uh really like downbeat 70s stuff cool. so like uh let's scare jessica to death and uh well, just kind of all 70s. Simon King of the Witches, Werewolves on Wheels, a lot of the Euro stuff. Uh, weird, just weird. Stuff. The Baby, I really like, you know, just a lot of the 70s stuff because they always ended downbeat. Death Dream, that's a favorite of mine. Cool. Uh, Bob Clark movie and a lot of 80s stuff just because I grew up at that in that time. Like yeah. when video stores just came up yeah. and it was like, oh, oh, and I was allowed to rent anything. My parents didn't care. They they subscribed me to Gore Zone, Fangoria, and Toxic Horror. Awesome. And yeah, they let me get all the heavy metal magazine, Vampirella, all that stuff from the wow. and they That's cool. Yeah, buy me everything. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to read that stuff, but uh I would always, you know, all my best friends, or at least 
I guess maybe I picked them for that reason, but I, I, whenever I would stay over their house or hang out over their houses, they'd be the ones renting all the horror or have the horror collections and, and got <laughs> yeah. me obsessed with the eighties. And, you know, it's funny. Um, I'm getting my son into a lot of the stuff. He just turned 13 years old. I've been showing him horror movies since he was about eight um, slowly. And obviously start him off with the empire and the full moon films and then go from there. And he's like, Oh, I want to see the nightmare series, or I want to see the you know Friday the 13th series. And we'll watch those things in order. And then he, I mean, like you, I, I'm more into like the eighties and, and like late seventies stuff. Cause I'm still digging into the seventies, but he, yeah, uh, he recently, he recently convinced me to watch the purge series with him. Cause he's younger and obviously likes the newer stuff versus the grainy or older stuff um which ultimately wasn't that bad i mean i i i've made it out to be worse than it was going to be um the purge stuff there, there was some good moments in those uh the conjuring universe that was another one that he basically wanted me to watch in, in its entirety with him and we did and that actually again it was one of those where i'm like it's gonna suck i heard a lot of shit things about it or whatever yeah. um and and ended up being a lot better than i expected so i set the bar low and ended up being good so, yeah, a lot of people shit on those movies. It's like they're fine, you know. Yeah, they're it's fine. Like, no, like there's nothing wrong, and they're totally entertaining. And I, you yeah. know, I enjoy them. Yeah, I, I just got my kids, and we just watched uh, King Kingdom of the Spiders, The Car, and Jaws. So. Dude, if you, you can't, oh man, if you can see it, the, my background on my oh, god damn it, <laughs> in background on my phone. Oh yeah, I see it. I see uh, it. Anyway, Kingdom of the Spiders. <laughs> Wallpaper. Yeah, that's um, great art. It looks like a giant spider, but it's just a spider close to the camera angle of the painting. Yeah. Yeah, that painting's awesome. I it's beautiful. That. It's beautiful. It is one of my favorite, like, it's it's a guilty pleasure of mine where, like, I, it traumatized me as a kid. Saturday Nightmares <laughs> on USA Network yeah, traumatized yeah. the shit out of me as a kid. My yeah. grandmother would let me watch that stuff when I sleep over her house. And literally, like, clockwork, every, every Saturday night, I'd sleep over her house. Um, there was films that I saw on that channel that literally traumatized me. Like I grew a massive fear of fucking spiders because of this goddamn film. I grew a fucking chaotic fear for, for, um, or not fear, but hatred for cats because of the uninvited with George Kennedy. Oh yeah. And Google I was like, these <laughs> fucking mutants. I swear there's a mutant in these goddamn things. I don't know. You can be scared of cats from that movie. But... Not scared, but like, I mean, plus as a kid, I didn't really. Yeah. Trust me, We, I, I swear to God, I bought the Blu-ray maybe a month ago. Oh, I love I, it. I, the the, the owl kid. on a loop and stuff. You can see the freaking elbow of the puppeteer. When yeah, the it's amazing. I, I'm like, it's not scary. But I mean, when I was a kid, when I was eight years old, it scared the shit out of me. Um, and then there was another one too where like, it, it fucked me up. Um, a creep show too. The the raft. Um, oh I, yeah. I, I would not awesome. go in anything, any body of water that I couldn't see with the fuck <laughs> in the bottom. Um, yeah. So I, I, again, Saturday night that was good stuff. But uh, going back to seventies horror real quick. Uh, what is it? Uh, there was one. Actually, there's a whole bunch. But um, there, I'm I'm starting slowly now to dig more into the seventies. Taking requests too, by the way, because I didn't see that many of those so okay. you know, over time I'm, I'm starting to really be like oh dude these are fucking really good man and i and i think uh saturday nightmares as a matter of fact actually had um, a couple late 70s um movies they did and, yeah and, um the one of my personal favorites oh yeah the thing that made me afraid of rottweilers um it was uh oh. no it was, where's it rottweilers german shepherds um it was uh Devil Dog, The Hound of Hell with Richard Crow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Favorite fucking movies of all time. I got There's a German that... Shepherd right next to me, too, but she's not I... the Devil Dog. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have nightmares of, of German Shepherds going after my neck, and I'd literally have to snap their mouths open <laughs> to get out of my dream. It was really bizarre. And I mean, anyway, so. The satanic very... puppy in the movie. Yes. It was so <laughs> cute in the beginning. And then, <laughs> or when Richard Crenna had to put his hand or his the dog was possessing his hand to go into the fucking um, lawnmower that was upside down. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh man, but that was a great movie. Love that one. Uh, yeah, I have it on was... DVD. The, yeah, me too. The two disc set. Yeah. Yeah, it was good behind the scenes shit in that one too. Yeah, um, it's great. The other one was uh, the Dead Don't Die. Uh, that one, not the fucking new Bill Murray thing. I'm talking 1974, 75, I think it was, with um, R uh, Ralph Nalder was the was the guy. Oh, George Hamilton was in that. Um, really overrated 
not overrated, I'm sorry, underrated, underrated uh, story. And uh, it, obviously it could have been done better. Um, Ray Milland was in it. And Ray Milland had many interviews over the years saying that that movie, he packed it in before he, he even got there. Like he just didn't give a shit and a lot of the performances. <laughs> yeah. in but the story itself about, um, you know, zombies and the, the, the poster art on that one, the box art for that one was Ralph Nelder looking zombie-like like this and it, it was like a humanistic zombie it wasn't fucking you know yeah this thing or like or pile of dust or whatever it was you know a recently deceased human that was literally in a coffin next thing you know his eyes are just blackened and you know it, it just it, it was fucking amazing check out the dead don't die it's it's great yeah it's, i don't i, I it, i've seen almost everything but that one is on youtube for free me yeah, check it out. It's on YouTube for free. It's it's um it's it's a I can't say a slow burn. The first twenty minutes are like it's a twenty minute slow burn of a setup, but then the last 40, 50 minutes of it, it's really entertaining. Um, the original Hills Have Eyes, Steve. Yes, absolutely. That's a good one. Um, you know, I, I do. You know, I I love a lot of that stuff, and you know, I actually have seen a lot more of the seventies than I than I realize. Um, so going forward, um. Is there anything that has been announced um, that you're looking forward to seeing, or is there anything out in the theaters that have you uh, been to the theaters the Dune lately? Movie. That's about it. Just Dune, because I uh, I saw the first one at the movies when I was a kid. I had all the toys, the coloring books, the cut out paper book. I was obsessed with it, and I read the book. That's like one of the only books I read as a kid. So I'm definitely want to see the Dune movie. Now. That's <laughs> yeah, that's that's so here's a question for you then. Like, do you you think with the extra multi millions of dollars that they'll have for this, they'll actually be good or better? Or you think that there's a chance that maybe it could be disappointing? Well, I mean, since I have such love for the original, well, not original, but the David Lynch version. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, but I'm sure it's going to be great. I think they're going to go more into detail of the book and stuff like that. Well then, cool. I'm looking so forward to it too. Should be if if he's allowed to do sequels and stuff, because I think the first movie is the first half of the first book. Oh, so we'll see. But I don't know. I mean, like like he did the Blade Runner. I don't really care about any of that stuff. You know, it's I'm just like, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's cool. You know, it's you know, I, I that's funny because um, one of my favorite Empire films is Transfers, the original one, and that had a lot of comparisons to you know being like a blade runner knockoff of a knockoff or yeah whatever. and and no I, I wasn't i'm not really a science fiction guy um but trances is still for whatever reason just one of my favorite movies i don't know if it's the performances or it's just the well-written script by danny billison and paul de mayo but but tim thomerson man is one of my yeah favorite he's amazing guys. love him yeah yeah too bad he wasn't in more stuff. You know? I know. Doll Man. I mean, I, I love Doll Man. Doll Man. Yeah, yeah. Doll Man. Ride. When came out, we'd always watch the full moon features and like, oh, this is coming out next. And, yeah. we'd and those full moon features were the best. I love that. That was like a new thing, you know, the, where they had the making of. The video zone. Yeah. Yeah. Video yeah. zone. That's yeah. It. Yeah. I, I lived for that. I was, again, you're right. I'm obsessed. I, I would literally go to the the video store into that section looking for that fucking full moon logo yeah and i didn't then, care what it was i rented everything full moon exactly and i had a laser disc player as a kid oh and my parents because i saved up and my parents chipped in and yeah so i got them all on laser disc it was uh and i was a kid cool. too so it was like a i was like such a cinephile as a kid it was it was out of control <laughs> our good friend um uh, Duke Sandifer, he he wrote Ghost Town um, for uh, for Empire Pictures. It was okay. It had uh, Jimmy F. Skaggs, rest in peace, um, and uh, what was it? Frank Luz or Luz, whatever. Uh, from uh, he was in oh the the the, the nest. That oh, was yeah, the other. The one. All right. That's the other one that fucking freaked me out <laughs> as a kid. Like deathly afraid of roaches, man, and just the, the gore in that was just beautiful. Yeah, the, yeah. the ending was insanely beautiful. But anyway, he was the the sheriff in that movie was the sheriff in Ghost Town as well. Oh, okay, and, uh, and came out the same fucking year too, and everything else. But um, but yeah, what the fuck was I talking about, dude? I don't know. Whatever, I lost my train <laughs> of thought. But uh, but yeah. So let's see. We have um we have a bunch of stuff coming up, 
and we do we do have a patreon that's going to be happening soon to help raise money because apparently i suck at crowdfunding <laughs> uh ran two unsuccessful campaigns to to finish it's rough uh, to do seasons um we again and we seasons is one of those things where yes we could have probably shot it for less money and and all that other good stuff uh however i'm not gonna do that um I, we've, we've put our foot down with certain projects and that is one that um it's on hold until we raise another eighty thousand dollars to do this right and put it in ben's hands so that ben can make the film that he wants to make um and do an amazing job um so that's that and i obviously can't raise that much money on crowdfunding for some funders. yeah so even and i can't the, believe it with that cast and it's just out of control yeah. i was like man that was that was no. my childhood all up on screen you know no nobody know it, it, it like imagine living this i mean it, that was the most stressful thing like running two of them and yeah <laughs> and and watching it every day trying to make posts about it every day trying to like pump people up in, in it's so much work i did I, I put in for that thing and then to have those campaigns both not reach their goals was just um it's just insane. like luck it's just you got to have the right person see it at the right time and that's yeah. what, you know when people tweet about whatever otherwise yeah. it's, no one sees anything you know unless it just gets out there i know so luck, luck the, of the draw We'll only do crowdfunding campaigns going forward, I mean, which we will. We'll, we'll do one for every one of our movies. We, it doesn't matter if a studio gave us money for it or not. I mean, we, we are going to do it because originally the intent of the crowdfunding campaign, the first one was we had a supposed backer who was going to be giving us money behind the scenes. So we weren't going to have to worry about the crowdfunding campaign. It was just going to be like extra. Yeah, um, that's that's good. That's that's what you should do. Um, my main purpose for it was to use it as a marketing tool for that set reason you just said having people share it or retweet it or whatever and, and do raise awareness and create buzz for the project itself so we will do it for like all of our things and we'll just set the goal so low that we don't really if we go over the goal great all that money will go into the production but if not then you know well at least people know about the project um so we do have other projects coming up that uh We've got money on the table for a few projects and then there's other money that you know um if we raise say fifty thousand dollars we have someone who will give us fifty thousand dollars to make a hundred thousand dollars but they won't give us the money you know what i'm saying it's like we have yeah. to the first bit which is is what it is but that we have a few projects revenge fantasy um that's you know ripping roaring and ready to go we just need 50 to a hundred thousand for that one um amazing story i'll have to send that script to you if you want to read it sometime it's really, yeah yeah really cool it's a it's a heavy metal horror slash religious ask anti-religious ask i guess you say we're like the the bad guys the religious nuts and then the yeah, uh, as it uh, should be. yeah and the heavy metal band you know the, the satanic heavy metal band the heroes um per se so uh there's that and also gorilla wants blood uh we we just had a rewrite on that one um by brandon did it? He made it like more action packed. That that yeah. one really fascinates me. I want to know what that's about. I always hey. love gorillas as bad guys, like Night of the Ape and Bloody yeah. Ape and all that stuff. I, it, I love. A, it. In a nutshell, it's it's this. Um, there was a tragic accident where a uh, there was a pair of apes, uh, like a I don't know if it was a husband and wife ape or whatever you want to call it, but they're whatever, like they're male and a female, whatever, and the female ends up killing a kid um was it a kid or, or or one of the workers there uh, i don't remember it, bottom line it, it kills somebody and then they put down the um uh the female ape and because they did that well solomon the big ape i mean the the other dude ape whatever um he gets upset about that because he's highly intelligent and a lot of people don't realize that so over time he holds a grudge against the kid and the kid's family that was killed by um or that forced um his partner to be killed yeah now he goes on a fucking rampage um strategically killing people um that have anything to do with that ordeal or um the people or the family members of the people that were killed so it's just a fucking murder fest it's amazing awesome. it's, it's, it, it's there's a bit of camp in that one too but um i know for a fact that brandon added a lot more like action scenes um like for example where um this lady is doing um 
kind of like Return of the Living Dead too, where the ladies do, or the girls doing aerobics, eighties aerobics inside her living room, or whatever, and doesn't realize there's a fucking you know six foot gorilla behind her and and uh, basically rips her head off and then kicks it against the the wall, um, and that type of shit. So, um, <laughs> too bad Dino De Laurentiis was dead; he'd probably produce it. I I, I know. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so there's that one, um, but that's going to cost a little bit more money because we, you know, we didn't realize how expensive it is to have a realistic. Yeah, uh, suit. that's that's a tricky thing. Yeah, we're not doing CG for that one. We're just going to do like a, you know, foam latex, you know, gorilla suit that form fitting, you know, uh, make it realistic, and then have you know, a mask and and uh, there's a lot of cool kills and a lot of added kills in there now, so it, it's it's going to be pricey. Um, and then the one above your head is, uh, you can't really see it, but uh, it's The Faces, which is written by Richard Humphreys. It's uh, Taurus Trap meets Chopping Mall. Um, nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. A lot of um, security robots, like uh, basically prototypes. This millionaire, um, billionaire, whatever, uh, bought this abandoned mining town in the middle of British Columbia uh, based off of Kitsalt. I think we've talked about this before, uh, you and I, maybe. I, I no, know, but, no. You know, uh, so basically... He bought this uh, abandoned mining town and he made his millions off of robotics, uh, making like different, um, you know, like a rover, a drone, uh, you know, basically security type robots. So the original prototypes when, you know, after like there's no more updates for those, like they're just old shits. He sent them to his island to protect them or protect the island from like, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, people who shouldn't be there type of shit. Yeah. So. There's a caretaker there as well. And well, it just so happens that the caretaker is kids, uh, or daughter or whatever, and her friends come to visit. Uh, you can only get there by ferry or you have to go there like with an eight hour dirt road drive, whatever type of deal. And um, they, they go there and there's also some urban, urban explorers that go there around the same time. And it just so happens that this random update goes to those robots and drones or whatever and uh, fucks them up and they're out for the kill now. And one of them in particular, the humanoid robot, literally ends up taking all of the bodies that were you know, murdered uh, from all the different robots and cuts their skin off and wears their face and starts acting like them. So he was literally stalking these people and realized their personalities and, and whatever. And he'll literally like kill this girl, for example, and then wear her face, pull her skin onto his you know, hands or whatever and act like he's her. Or no. the yeah yeah hundred percent and then um and say hey come on out it's okay it's just me you know that type of thing or or start talking to people like you know that he's their friend even though he just fucking murdered the friend and you know it's just so sick sadistic shit in there it's really funny <laughs> and cool and a lot of kills and a lot of eerie stuff but anyway that's um, the faces and then we also have um, static which I mentioned on this uh, previous show it's not uh, the script isn't finished on that one yet but uh, it's a really cool idea by Duke Sanifor um and elliot bowen's gonna write that one we also have um which is the other one that we have coming up brandon wrote a script one of his own scripts that we're going to produce um called we're here or it's pretty much um uh i i can't say anything about it without spoiling it but uh, yeah hey, hey morgan how you doing buddy um morgan's got some cool projects coming up too he's got um uh he's writing a hellvira script uh, he, which is a character in his uh sh uh what was it? Um, Wicked Jack, right? It was Wicked Jack. So he made a short film called Wicked Jack that he's going to be using to, he's been putting out in different, different festivals and getting accepted in different festivals to use as a proof of concept to make Wicked Jack, you know, which yeah. is an awesome, cool concept. And, and Morgan's like a brilliant graphic designer as well. Um, and uh, yeah, man, I should check out, anybody who's watching this, check out Morgan Wellborn, check out Wicked Jack, check out Helvira, check out... All his stuff, great people. Um, and again, I, he's part of the subsoil family. As a matter of fact, Morgan, I should get you on here one time because, again, um, you're all part of the subsoil family. So, um, Steve, you as well, dude. I'll uh, bring you on here sometime. We can shoot the shit because you're part of the subsoil family. And Lana, you as well. Um, you're, you're part of the subsoil family. So, that's what this is all about. Uh, I'm basically bringing everybody on to introduce you uh, or introduce them to whoever's watching. And then, um, explain how you know they're part of the subsoil family and then from time to time we'll have little shindigs where we're all just shooting the shit about horror or any specific horror related topic um i know we do have 
a lot of action films as well, a lot of action scripts, and also some science fiction and thrillers. They're not necessarily specifically horror, but um, so you're going for the whole Corman. <laughs> yeah, but, but primarily horror. Okay. Primarily horror. So, yeah, yeah, mostly horror because it's 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 that's my love, my wheelhouse. And then it just so happens that everybody else in the family, like Jesse Cozell, Brandon Brooks, I mean, we all have different loves, and I want everybody's bits and pieces to be a part of subsoil that's what this is is a family that's what i was trying to say from day one so a lot of the people that we have in the family no matter how much or how little they're they they do um it, it's it's a part of this it's a piece of it and um and a lot of people are like cross training almost like elliot bowen is the perfect example where he came in and, and reached out to me and I didn't have anything for sp specific for him to do. But then I said, hey, here's these scripts. Read these scripts. And um, you give notes on these scripts. As a matter of fact, Doug Robbins uh, wrote an amazing script called The, De the Dead Mall, which um, that's another one that I want to do soon. Um, and yeah, um, so basically he, he's reading these scripts, give his notes on them. And then all of a sudden I'm like, dude, you're doing all these notes for all these scripts, which is amazing. And then a lot of the writers use almost everything that he, he sent for notes, not knowing who Elliot is. I'm just like, Hey, here's some notes from Elliot, make some fixes. And, uh, and they do it sometimes four or five, six drafts or whatever. Um, and then I said, Elliot, why don't you write something? So he wrote revenge fantasy. And now I have Duke Senna for actually doing um, a polish on his script. Uh, for Revenge Fantasy, and Elliot's going to be writing one of Duke's concepts, uh, Static, which is really cool. So, awesome. um, yeah, if anyone wants to know more about Static, watch the other interview I did. <laughs> I talked all about <laughs> it, so I'm not doing it again. But, um, yeah, listen, you know, it's one of these things where I love your art. I think everybody else loves yeah. your art, especially the people that have seen it. You have a shitload of followers on social media, deservedly so and always some lovely comments on there about your work i yeah, love the fact that you have positive well yeah i mean i haven't really seen any negative um but the main thing is that the cool thing that you do is the work in progress is uh, you the the posts that you do you show the whole process the whole way through and then you know you see the final product and that's just that's really really cool so oh, right on yeah like i said because it's all it's a guess to me what happens like from one stage to the next, it's like, nah, I don't know. We'll see. And I just hope for the best. Like Sometimes everybody. Things happen and they work out and that's all cool. Yeah. Yeah. So what else have you done? Like uh, tell the people who are watching this anyway, um, or will watch this, like what other stuff besides like you've done other things besides poster art, you've done like magazine covers, right? Or what else have you done? Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, well, when I was in Finland, I, I used to hang out with all the band guys like in Helsinki. So I knew all those guys and I painted and they're like, Hey, you think you do an album cover? I was like, yeah, why not? So that started to go. And I started doing a lot of album covers for the Finnish bands. And I even got nominated for a, what is it? It's an Emma there. So it's a Grammy, their equivalent of a Grammy, but you got to pay to go to the award show. So I was like, ah, who cares? Oh. Anyways, some shitty Finnish band Rasmus won. <laughs> they're like a, Kind of a mainstream, you know, finished mainstream band. So, it, but I have my stuff at um, Museum of Modern Art. So that was cool. Like they had the album cover there and people could vote for it in the Museum of Modern Art. And That's then I awesome. Just started doing, yeah. I started reaching out to people doing movies like, oh, I'd love to do a horror poster for you. <laughs> really? That's actually been my dream. I had, I used to go to the video store and buy posters for like 25 cents and, yeah, I had all like Wing Hauser posters, King of the Kick, but all this crazy, yeah, low right. budget movies. That's what I was into, like low yeah. budget action and horror, and so it was just a dream to do movie posters, you know. And yeah, I mean, some of the um, the other stuff that you've done that I loved and I've seen is that I noticed you did a, a really cool piece of art for another. Is it a short film, right? Uh, recently, or semi recently. Uh, maybe the last, I don't know, recently could be six months for me. I don't know. Um, you did a short film, didn't you? I mean, you did the. Yeah, it was uh, that one. That one. Yes. That's, that's, Love, the, that's Norwegian short film, Baby Boom. And it's got like the special effects guys. The dude who did, um, what is that? Oh, my God. I'm totally blanking. 
the Red versus Dead. What is that? With the Nazi zombies, Dead Snow. Dead Snow, no did, shit. Yeah, so he did like the effects for that those movies and Troll Hunter, and it's got a wow. lot of people involved in the Norwegian film industry are involved in that movie. So it's awesome. really cool. Like it should be coming cool. out soon. Yeah, and That's I did some cool. Finnish, Finnish short films and. It's a cool about uh, the one. That's a cool skateboard you got back there. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> they yes. gave me a couple of them. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so yeah, so anybody who wants to follow Chad, it's at Chad Keith Helsinki. Yeah. Um, on yeah, on social media. Um, yes, yeah, Dead Snow was brutal, dude. I fucking it's it's in it's funny because the first the first time someone's like it's a horror comedy you'll love it and I'm like it doesn't look like a horror comedy <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, yeah it's it's cool man good stuff um yeah follow Chad and we're gonna be working more together collaborating and stuff like that if you're interested I know Chad has a waiting list um and yeah uh, but it, it doesn't hurt <laughs> to reach out I mean honestly money talks if you got you got a couple grand just throw it chad's way and pretty, <laughs> yeah. he can fit you in you somewhere <laughs> you can probably fit you in that's what brandon said he's like yeah man you know I, I can't wait to get to the point where like you know we have chad doing like all these posters and i'm like dude but he's so busy and and stuff like that because yeah, really it's really just a part part-time thing for me you know it's i know and so I, it's like really hard to find time to do it. It's Brandon was like, one thing's like I do it as a, a living. It's like, no, no, no. I wish, but yeah, maybe I don't right. wish. You Brandon, know? Brandon, Brandon said money talks though. He's like, listen, man, let, let's, you know, next time let's get, let's get him to, uh, let's just toss him a couple grand. He'll be like, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So thanks to everybody who tuned in live. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Lana. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Doug. Um, I know there's other viewers that didn't say anything that um, definitely gave us a like or a thumbs up or a heart or whatever anyway. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're streaming live on Periscope, which is geez, uh, Twitter. Um, and then we were on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So uh, make sure you like, you share, you subscribe, you whatever. If you are part of the Subsoil family and or you want to be a part of the Subsoil family, reach out to us. If you want to do one of these shows with us and just shoot the shit, talk horror. That's great. I would love to interview you first and get to know you better. And then, you know, uh, then we can do more of these shoot the shit shows. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, Chad, I'll definitely talk to you for like a minute or two off uh, the air. But um, right. yeah, please make sure you people, you know, share this, like this, subscribe this. And we do have a shop. It's uh, subsoilfilms.threadless.com. If you buy some subsoil stuff that goes into our kitty for, you know, future projects. We're going to be adding more designs in there soon, um, like the posters you see behind me. We're going to put on uh, T-shirts, and um, the money made for those specific T-shirts will the proceeds anyway. Again, we don't make a ton of money off a T-shirt. We make like three bucks off of a twenty-dollar T-shirt. So just to give you an idea, but anyway, th that three dollars will go into a pot for like the budget for that particular movie. So buy a hundred thousand of them, please. Um, <laughs> And then we can make a movie. Uh, but yeah, if there's anything like, you know, there's still seasons stuff in there. So anything you buy that seasons related, it goes into the seasons pot. We need like 80 grand to finish that film. It would be very helpful. Um, we'll just, you know, make sure that, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to waste it is the point. We're, we're not going to rush something that, you know, it's it's not meant for a twenty thousand dollar budget. It's meant for a hundred twenty thousand dollar budget. Like Night of the Meteor Score is like a three million dollar film. Like we're not gonna just waste that on fifty thousand dollars. So, um, but we do have some fifty thousand dollar films. So if you want to pitch in, you want to invest, you want to whatever. We got back end points for sale in any of these films. Um, you know, just reach out to Subsoil Films. Uh, yeah, and if you want to write for us, if you want to take one of our concepts and put it into a script form, reach out to us. We're always looking for more help with that. And um, yeah, pretty soon we're going to um, interview our digital poster artist guy. So that's the thing is that, you know, it would be kind of cool to get Chad to do some of these posters right behind us, like do his version of those. And then we could have like dual covers, like a double sided slip. You know what I'm saying? For like for all our movies. Um, and then vice versa, have like the other guy do a shits and giggles one, and we can have like two different alternate, like a digital and then an actual painting type of thing. And that's what uh you know, Empire used to do that. 
with uh, like we just talked about zone troopers earlier and uh, and so on. But uh, whatever, we're just a big collaboration, and uh, I hope you enjoy this. I know I talked way too long, but uh, have a good night, everybody, and we'll see you again soon. Good night. And Chad, I'll talk to you real quick off the end.